want, but we're going <laughs> high. She even what designs her hair. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is, here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right. So we are live. Let me just uh, double check on my channel. We'll give it a little second here to catch up with us. Um, let me see. Thank you guys for joining me. That's uh, awesome. Awesome, awesome to have you. So where is the live session? I'm just. I should oh, be able to get some of my books. Yeah, you should. Because we're here. We're here to chat about you and your books today. Oh, there I see John. He says, what's up? What's up, John? Nice to have you. So nice to see you here. Love it. Uh, so if you're joining us, welcome. So nice to have you. Uh, we are here to chat today with, um, with uh, cover designer Tara Cavosi, a member of my team. We also have Bob Zaslow, who's going to share a little bit about his story, his books, and kind of the process that we've been going through. And we're also here, as usual, to answer your self-publishing questions. So um, without further ado, I'm going to ask um, Tara to just introduce herself a little bit here, and uh, then we can move on. Bob should be back shortly with his books. Hi, I'm Tara Cavosi. I am a 25 year veteran of consumer products design. And over COVID, um, I decided to finally work on my children's book that I was hoping and praying to do for a very long time and just never had the time to do it. And like everybody, COVID, you know, shut down everybody's lives and I had the time to do it. And luckily, I came across April, who was like a godsend, and she held my hand through the entire process, and I wound up publishing the most adorable children's book about a little girl with curly hair inspired by my daughter, and it was just such an incredible experience, and April, anyone who works with her knows how incredible she is and how much she cares about her authors and wants them to do so well. And I just felt that. And she was part of the reason that I fell in love with children's books. And, you know, in particular, I fell in love with the cover design process. And um, I just felt so drawn to it. And while I didn't have a lot of um, experience, you know, in children's books, I do have a lot of experience in art directing um, projects and, and product um, launches and things like that, and just kind of fell into this world. And, you know, I, I consider myself a mocker upper. <laughs> I am not a formatter. Um, but what I love to do is take uh, the artwork that um, authors think about wanting to have on their covers. And I lay it out in a way that um, almost like cover design conceptualization and put it all together in this perfect way where the formatters who sometimes really don't want to do the covers or because they're very time consuming, um, do the cover. So I take that kind of heavy lifting off their plate, lay out a, a great design, and then they can just format it. And the whole process moves very smoothly. So I'm just like one component of that process. And I love it. And I want people to have just beautiful children's book covers, because in the world of children's books, you do judge a book by its cover. And um, the more beautiful the cover, the more people are engaged and the more you can hook them and the more they want to buy your book. So um, so I love being a part of that process. I'm so glad to have you. And I, when I started talking to Bob about, uh, about coming and talking about his books and the process, um, I know that we're going to touch on his cover updates. And so that's why I invited you because I think not only can it be helpful with 
Bob's story, but also for others who are looking for some some assistance or uh, some comments and, and they have questions about cover design as well. So let's move Bob over. Bob, how about you? Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and talk about your, you know, your process of writing. I mean, let's start with introductions. How many books do you have? How did you get into writing? Okay, sure. Well, I'm uh, Bob Zaslow. I lived in, uh, born in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in the New York area, and uh, was a teacher there, and I was a professional advertising copywriter and associate creative director uh, in various agencies. But uh, I, I switched and um, when it, it became clear that I was getting too old to be hip as an advertising copywriter, I, I went back to teaching and uh, and became a, an art teacher mostly, but also taught English and other subjects. Uh, and uh, but taught in the Bronx and used stories to teach my children, my students. And uh, and that's where I got the bug to, to become a writer and and to to use what you know my ability to stand in front of a class and teach to which with stories that was the best method and uh so when i retired from teaching uh i i moved out here to we 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 live on a lake oh it's beautiful i'm jealous whoops you're you're muted bob Gotta unmute you. Hey, Bob, can you hear me? You gotta unmute yourself. I think you accidentally hit the mute button. Oh, sorry. There you go. Yeah, typical, typical. Uh, we love it here, and uh, I, I sit right, right near, right by this big picture window, and look out. That's where I do all my writing, and uh, it's exciting. And I, I just want to say before I go on about my books, I want to talk about Tara, who just spoke. She took five of my covers that weren't particularly, they were really, I'm told they were good books and I, I got good reviews, but nobody, nobody in big numbers was, was buying them. And, and she turned the little postage stamp views of my covers. She made the, the, the titles pop and, and, and just did these magical things with the design. And uh, I'm so happy. It's she's wonderful. Thank you. It's so nice to have you on the panel. Thank uh, you, Bob. That's so uh, sweet. Thank you. Well, it's all true. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think I'd say it if it wasn't true. You're you're really good. I I'm, I I wrote her an email yesterday and I thanked her. I, I said I was so grateful that we you know that April got us together. Yes, I am too. Yeah, and it's, it's the, been wonderful. Uh, one of the things I love about your books, Bob, is, and I've told you this before, is they, they, the stories and the way that you go through your storytelling, it, it's so profound. And I think about the mayfly and the Methuselah tree, and I find oh, I just have it right here. Uh, so yeah, so there's the an original cover that, uh, and I can I can always share. The, the other, uh, the updated cover. Oh, share uh, the updated cover, because Tara. Yeah. Can I share, can I share my screen? I think you share screen. Give it a try, Tara. Do I just click on present here? Yes. So I'm going to, can you see my, my screen? Oh, share screen, there it is. I can't. So. I don't think it's showing up. I'm wondering. Can you see? Give you any special permissions or anything? Huh. I can certainly um, share the. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna. So add it. there you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, look at the difference. Yeah. So here is on the left the original cover. And listen, this artwork is just beautiful. It's so unique and it's so beautiful, but I felt like it wasn't prominent enough. Like I, I wanted it to be bigger. I wanted the mayfly to be up a little bit higher. We wanted to show Bob's um, book awards on the cover. And all of a sudden, this tree is just popping. This tree, this Methuselah tree is just 
big and bold and front and center, which it should be because it's the star of the star of the book. And, you know, it's just sweet and, you know, looks like it could be, you know, right there with the best of them in Barnes and Nobles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. On the and, shelf. And, this, and the story deserves to be there. It's such an amazing right. story. It's an award-winning and now, story. And, and now, now it's, it looks exactly like it belongs with all of those others. Right. And we've just given reverence to like this beautiful artwork. And now the artwork is just like, even though the, the text is bigger, it's like the artwork is more prominent too, you know? Yeah, how did you pull off that magic trick? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it is the font choice, isn't it, Tara? A lot of it is the font choice and the layout of the text and, and the placement of the text. And I also just want it to be fun. These are books for kids, right? So I want it to be fun. I want it to be to grab them. And I think we really achieved that with the Mayfly and the Methuselah tree. And no matter how wonderful your story is, if the cover is not going to attract people, then you're going to get lost on Amazon. It's so easy for people to see a cover that's, eh, it's okay. It's, it's, you know, it's beautiful artwork, but if it looks at all like it's been homemade or not professionally right. designed, right. especially with the influx of stories that are coming between AI artwork and, you know, people do DIY, I'm going to write and publish a book in a weekend kind of things. Right. They're inundating Amazon. So it's very easy for people to see uh, or to just discount something if the cover is not uh bringing them into the story. It's so true. And if the, and just like you said, if the cover looks homemade or like somebody did it themselves, people will just keep scrolling. They will not, they won't even stop, right? Because they just assume if the outside looks homemade, the inside content is going to be homemade also and, you know, and not done professionally. So that's why it's so important to have your cover look like it came from a big publisher. And why not? Right. Exactly. You know? That's what we want. And that's that's what um, Bob's amazing story deserves. By the way, if you have not checked out the Mayfly and the Methuselah tree, there is no doubt in my mind why this book, this story has gotten these accolades and awards. It is amazing. And we'll have right. Bob talk a little bit more about that in a little while, but you've got to check it out on Amazon. Grab the ebook at least. I mean, this is something that I think every child should have in their uh, library. Mm -hmm. And it's something that, that teachers can use to talk about uh, and profound topics in a way that that, you know, give you the adult an opportunity to talk about deep things with your child, which I really love. Yeah, me too. Oh, so here's. You're so nice. Oh, I was going to just talk about the theme of the Mayfly and the Methuselah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please do. Please do. And Tell us more. Point. And we can move on to others, but because Tara did such a wonderful job on every cover, but uh, this is a basic story for your re uh, viewers. Um, I, 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 I was watching a National Geographic show on the, the Methuselah tree. It's called the world's oldest tree. It's about 4,800 years old. And I turned off the program and I thought, what what a good story it might be to have opposites meet. The, the Methuselah tree is the, one of the world's oldest living organisms. What if it met the, the mayfly, which lives for one day? <laughs> what would happen? How... How can the mayfly would represent the child? It, 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 it's literally born yesterday, and uh, and and so I came up with this story of the grouchy old mayfly and uh, the grouchy old Methuselah tree. And everything is the same old, same old. Uh, uh, I'm bored, 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 kind of thing. And then the Methuselah, then the mayfly comes flitting in. Everything is brand new. Ah, wide open eyes, and everything is brand new and exciting. And the and the Methuselah trick. Oh my God! What? Don't you know that you're going to die tomorrow eventually? <laughs> and the, and the mayfly says, "What's tomorrow mean?" And and but by the end of the book, the enthusiasm, the exuberance of the mayfly gets to the Methuselah tree. 
and uh, th there's a there is a happy ending. I I even made a I liked it so much, and after it won the award, uh, the uh, from uh, back in April uh, or, or April or May of 2022, I uh, I turned it into a, a an animated film. Oh, that's uh, amazing! Which is uh, actually it's it's available. Um, uh, I don't know how we can get the the the, the, the there is a, a URL that you can use, or uh, it's on YouTube. You can you can type in. Oh, that's right. You can just type in Mayfly in the Methuselah tree, Bob Zaslow, and it'll it'll come up. You can view it. Yeah, I'll post it onto the link for this uh, in this yeah. video as well. I'm really yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's it's. Um, oh, I can't wait to see it, Bob. One of my favorite books. I forgot to tell you about that. So yeah, <laughs> go watch the animation. It's it was well done. Okay, we can go on to the next one. Thank so you. So let's go to the next one. So this is Bob's beautiful book, Joy's Compass. And we just, she just, you know, this first cover is beautiful, right? The artwork is incredible and this beautiful butterfly. But I felt like it didn't really convey, you know, what the book was really about. And it's about this little girl going on this journey and, and using this compass. And this image really conveys that. And I just wanted to put like a fun, you know, modern you know, font with movement. And it really, I think, changes this whole look and feel of this book in the best way possible. Yeah, it expresses her, that particular illustration expresses her joy at the end yes. of the book. That joy is, a, just to back up a, a little bit, it's not joyful at the beginning. Yes. Uh, she, she wants this and wants that and is rather demanding isn't really satisfied wherever she is but uh this peddler comes to town and as a gift gives her this compass it gives her parents her parents buy some things but he gives it he gives joy this compass and has her name on the back and uh well she she follows it in, into the woods uh on her way to a destination and instead of going to the destination the compass leads her off the beaten path where she she meets these uh, other animals and um and what she learns about is that the joy comes from helping others uh three different times she helps other beings other creatures and uh and she feels a little ting of of joy that oh what is that Ooh. And, <laughs> and by the third time she starts to get the idea and this is near the this picture is near the end of the book where she, you know, she looks up and she and she really feels joyful, and yes. she realizes the secret is not to seek joy for yourself, but to help others be happy. So it's a very simple message, but one that children respond to. And I gotten some nice emails from parents about the lesson and how how much they like their child to they like reading it to their child. They like they like hearing the words themselves. Adults do. So. But without yeah. even knowing the content of the book you can tell that this image evokes a sense of joy. So you kind of get a sense of what the book is about just by looking at this image and seeing the title, you know, and the compass there. And that's really what you want to do. You, you almost want people to understand what the whole book is without having to explain it to them, just in the imagery and the title. Mm -hmm. And I think we've accomplished that with the, with the new redesign as opposed to the first book. While it was so beautiful with that butterfly, it really just didn't tell the story, but this this does much more. Yeah, you're you're right. And I learned a lot working with you, right? I learned that I, I mean, I learned what was not working. I didn't know, I was just a, a newbie ch children's book author tw uh, two and a half years ago, and uh, I didn't know. Yeah. But. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. So let's <laughs> go to the next one. So this is the shy little rosebud. And that little shy purple rosebud in the middle was, is the star. And I just love this like very classic, beautiful artwork. And I wanted the title to be beautiful and classic and timeless, and, but still pop. And I think we accomplished that. We put this beautiful border on there. And I just think that now this 
shy little rosebud is front and center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And here it's, it's evident that people will see the postage size stamp picture on Amazon and read it a lot better than they do it now. And the, the headline or the title isn't up on top. There's, right. so, there's much to like about it. This is a, this book, the shy little rosebud is a really a metaphor for any child who is shy because for whatever reason, uh, it, it could be a, a different race or religion, or uh, it could be their, their, for whatever reason they feel shy, uh, I think many, many children can relate to this little purple rosebud mm -hmm. in, a, in a field of, ye of yellow and red and pink and white rosebuds. And she feels really self-conscious about it. In fact, so self-conscious and so afraid to bloom that she stays all curled up, even, even as it becomes, the weather becomes cooler and all the other roses have blossomed. So she has to ask herself this question, is it more painful to remain curled up like this or to unfurl and, and, and just risk whatever happens? And ultimately, she does blossom and, and she's very well loved. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now the artwork is bigger because in the first cover, the artwork was like shrunken down a bit, like in that in that border and it was just small and, and a lot of the... Um, the background color it just wasn't necessary and i just wanted to enlarge the size of that beautiful art so people could see it and just put a title on there that people would see in a thumbnail on amazon but still give it that classic clean modern beautiful look and feel to it you did it exactly well, thank you <laughs> and i love i love that the lessons in in bob's book are there you know, when you talked about the way that you introduced the story, Bob, I I could have a conversation with my child and dig deeper based on the age of the child and how I want to help dig into that lesson with them um, and how it applies to them, which I really like. And I think teachers will love using these books also, but um, they don't beat kids over the head with a, mm -hmm. a lesson, you know, it, it'll, you allow the adults to help work through that or, or the child to work through it and how it applies to them personally, okay. which I really do enjoy. And That's, they're timeless lessons. Mm. Yeah. Which we love. Thank you. And I, I want to respond to one thing about beating the kids over the head with a lesson. I learned that with my very first book, which was called the most beautiful snowflake. Uh, and I, at the end, I tied it all up into a nice lesson. And when I showed it to a, 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 two agents who were really well respected, they said, we, we love your story and the writing, but uh, you've made it, you've hit it on the, no you've hit on the nose. It's just, it's way too over the top and preachy. So avoid that. And so I re always remember that. And I try to just allude to, point to uh, a, a lesson or a learning without and, and focus instead on the story and the characters and the cha and the change yeah denise says bob you have beautiful stories to tell i look forward to purchasing <laughs> thank you denise <laughs> that's so great Appreciate all right let's it. let's go on to the next so this is oig but i have to say i love this book bob this one is so i mean i love all of them but this is so fun so the day red almost ruined the rainbow but in the first cover you almost kind of didn't get really what it was about like what we were talking about earlier like this illustration on the original cover is so beautiful but you know right away you're not getting what the book is about but these two cars hitting into each other because the red light isn't working you just know immediately what it's about yeah this is yeah. this is such a great job here tara and uh, you schooled me on covers let me tell you i will <laughs> I, I you know I'll, I'll never think of covers the same way you really taught me a great deal i'm so <laughs> It, Thank you know, you. Yeah. of your talent. One, one thing that's important as you look at the before, and they, they say this all the time when it comes to covers, if you confuse, you lose. Because if people don't quite know what it is, they're not going to spend their time 
trying to figure it out, they're just going to move on to another. Book. They're just going to move on. It's so true. And you can't get a better illustration. So one of the things I do is I ask the authors, send me your cover, what you think you want on it, and then let me see the other illustrations. And sometimes you just need another fresh set of eyes mm -hmm. to take a look at your book and see as because I look at it from a consumer standpoint, right? I'm a consumer products designer in my, you know, my other career. And I look at everything from how are people going to understand this product? And I take that same approach with the covers, right? How are people going to understand this book? And from a consumer standpoint, I want to look at the other um, illustrations in the book, because I might as a consumer think, something different than the author thinks. And sometimes the author is, you know, you're emotionally connected. These are your babies. You're creating these things for the world. But sometimes you need the, the image that's going to sell the book rather than the image you love the most. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm right up against it. I can't be objective. Or it's hard to be objective. But now, in retrospect, I see what you've done here is so far superior. And it goes back to what you said earlier. It really tells the story of the book in one one great illustration um it's a, just for the audience it's just one day the rainbows woke up and red wasn't in his bed he wasn't next to orange and yellow and he, he uh, uh, or green or or uh, blue or indigo or violet he was just gone and so the whole what happened was everything that was red in the world was just gray <laughs> Who would want to eat a gray watermelon, right? Mm -hmm. Or or the guards at uh, Buck, Buck, Mr. Palace, they were in gray uniforms. They were very upset. Uh, and but this was such a great idea. To, it was it was only green and gray lights, no red. Mm -hmm. So that that you know, that's what happened. And uh, eventually, the colors managed to find red on. No, I I won't give it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so great too. And also the font choice that I use, you know, this is a line, this is a book, the illustrations are done in line art. So I wanted to follow that theme with the font too, and pick a line art looking font. And it all just comes together so perfectly. I love it. This is obviously, Bob, this is one of my favorites. I'm so glad you like it. Nice. All right, let's go to the next one. So, you know, obviously, again, this this cover is so great. The artwork is beautiful, but the title just didn't pop. And I wanted it to be fun. And I wanted to make the boy bigger and the cat bigger. And I love the tail kind of hanging over. Um, that was in the original. But we just needed to make it bigger, more prominent, more fun. You know, just some something that, you know, because I really liked kind of the layout with the boy, but we just needed that title to pop so that people could see it um, in, in a small thumbnail on, uh, on Amazon. But I still wanted that title to look like it fit. I didn't want something cartoony or something to, you know, you know, balloon, you know, like balloonish or, or cartoony, but this is perfect. It, it fits, it looks great, it pops. Mission accomplished. So tell us about Muffin Can't Hear Nothing, Bob. <laughs> I want to read you the first couple of pages because this is this is based on the, me meeting my cat who's in, in the house right now. Her name is Smokey. And um, on, a, on a, I guess it was in November, and she was curled up in a ball and all wet and on the stoops, just like... Oh yeah, it was just like I told this to Ginny, my illustrator. It's just like this, and uh, I, I want, I, uh, I was, I was already a, a, a father, and I had, you know, I was living in New York State, and we adopted her. But then, I'm, I, one of my friends told me that she adopted a cat also, and learned it was deaf, as uh, soon after she adopted it, and so I thought, okay, I'm going to tell the story of her cat. And add it to my my cat, and 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 have it be told by a kid from Brooklyn who who drops his G's and I N G's. So it starts <laughs> off like this: I saw Muffin before I named him Muffin. 
She was just a little gray furball, all wet and breathing hard. I picked her up and felt a tiny heart beating thump, 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 thump. I couldn't just put her back down in a corner of the porch steps. Hey, I mean, could you? So I tried my best to be careful while I brought her inside. Oh, that must be the run through the litter from the stray cat across the street, my mom says. Yeah, but can I keep it, please, Ma? Oh, that might not be such a good idea, honey. Yeah, but, 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 you know how it's a hard job, right? Yeah, I don't mind, Ma. Please, pretty please. Hey, she must have seen I wasn't kidding. Uh, and I, I made sure he, well, I'm going to go forward and just say, go to one part. He says, then one day, Muffin is eaten with her back to me. Uh, 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 Eating with and uh, when I drop a heavy pot on our kitchen tiles floor, bam, clam. But Muffin, she doesn't turn around or jump up like a crazy cat. I knew right then something bad must have happened before I found her, because Muffin can't hear nothing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was so much fun to write. It was fun to read just now, Jen. That's so great. I just and, love. Uh, I love the voices you do, Bob. Oh, I <laughs> use the acting lessons in New York. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Love it. All right, let's go to the next one. So this is Sloth. Oh, yeah, a creation myth called How the Sloth Got Its Smile. <laughs> Just like wanted it. to make it more fun. I mean, there. look oh. at this sloth and how fun he is. And I just thought the cover should match how fun this sloth is. So we just repositioned them and 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 put a title on that would pop. Yeah, it sure does. It. Night, night and day. Yay. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. So so we're talking about also about the sunflower one too, right? Yeah. I really love that oh. uh, cover and that story. And I can't wait to see what you do with that one. Cause I yeah, we're working on that one right special. now. That one yeah. is going to be so great. I yeah. have so many great ideas for that. We're just waiting for one piece of artwork and then we're going to go. My, yeah. The, my original illustrator who is in uh, Brazil was on vacation. So I, I needed to get one JPEG for Tara and I, I, I sent you one this morning, I think. Uh, it's still not this good resolution. I don't oh. think I could open that one. No, it was another one after you sent me that one. Oh, take a look at it. Okay, I'll take a look. We'll, we'll talk off camera. Okay. But, um, it's the story of, uh, uh, well, it, it's, um, it, it's about Van Gogh and his painting the sunflowers, and uh, which I've loved for many years. And uh, what I thought was, what if, there's one little sunflower that's sort of green and crinkly. It looks like one of my sunflowers that I have here. <laughs> and, but I care about it. It was It's small and, and kind of off-putting and it needed water. Anyway, Van Gogh picked all these beautiful large sunflowers for his painting. And then... And the little sunflowers said, you know, I, I, I expect that I'm, I'm pretty small. and But he but he picked, and he turns away from the sun, much like Van Gogh turned away from regular society. So, but he did finally, Van Gogh did finally pick this little sunflower and and eventually painted him. And that's, this is the story. And the artist painted it in the style of Van Gogh. And it's beautifully done with thick brush strokes. And it was done in oils and um, or acrylics. And it, it, it has a thickness to it and a, a, a texture. It's, it's beautifully, beautifully done. Yeah. I love so we'll see story. what happens. I think she's going to create more magic with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's going to so be for fun. Those, for those of you that have questions for Bob or for Tara, whether it's on design or writing and, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and, and post your questions here and we'll try to to um, answer them. Bob, what's new in your, what are you working on now? Anything new coming? Well, I just got a piano a keyboard. So I'm working on on uh, uh, relearning the piano so that I can add music to my, the voice narration. 
And uh, oh, I'm also, not. I just finished a song. Well, this is not children's books, but, but I'm really happy with it. I just, I, I play ukulele, so I just finished writing a, a song. It's really funny. It's called Fairweather Fans, and it's about when I was a Met fan, and the, you know, if the Mets were really losing by a large amount, <laughs> they would leave in the seventh inning, and I never did that. And I called them Fairweather Fans, so I finally I wrote a song about them. Anyway, uh, That's and fun. I'm also I'm also doing I'm retired now, so I don't have to. I can just write. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also finished. I finished a, a play with a uh, a partner called um uh oh 12th night a rap adaptation i love shakespeare and so i wrote rap i wrote uh, like uh, 45 minutes worth of raps to augment uh, to make uh, like 12th night it's a sort of a musical a rap musical and uh we're we're hoping that schools all over the country pick it up and and perform it oh so, that sounds fun that, that, that sounds and, really a lot of fun Three other books I'm working on. Uh, one is called. One is called. I, I told this. I think I told you this yesterday, right, Tara? Uh, I have a book uh, called "A Pucker of Lemons" <laughs> and, and other zany collective <laughs> nouns, like like uh, like an SUV of soccer moms. Yeah, it's going to be really fun, and. Uh, and then I have a book called The Dragon, The Dragonfly, and The Wishing Stone. And that's being drawn by my Japanese art instructor. I learned how to, I'm learning how to do Japanese brush painting. Uh, I'm, I practice every day. And it's so much fun. And he's this master. And so he's doing all the illustrations. And I like them so much, I came up with another book idea. Well, I'm not going to mention that one. Well, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got so many, you know, projects. So it's all good. I just keep them coming, Bob. Let's keep doing these covers. I'm with you. I'm with you. I told you I have at least two more for you. Yes, I can't wait. Denise says you're an inspiration to to her as a new author. That's awesome. Yeah, I've only been doing this for since 2020 or 2021. 2020 perfect nice. but but the thing is i had been i had written uh, uh you know it was plays i've been a playwright for since 2006 and uh and i used i used writing to teach my students we we would write raps in fact i taught i taught <laughs> i taught history with with uh with rap i wrote a i wrote a book called History Kids. It was a TV show called History Kids a long time ago uh, when I was in advertising for a short time. And um, it, it's, it was the history of the world in rap, all, mm. rap, all rhymed and syncopated. And, oh, uh, my gosh. That would and, be a lot of fun. And then uh, you must have been a fun teacher to have, Bob. That's for sure. I was fun. I had fun teaching. I loved it. It was really rewarding. And uh, I, in fact, now I volunteer in my, in my local town. And I teach sixth grade. Uh, okay. I taught them how to write children's books. <laughs> I, I, how to write and draw their own children's books. I did a three, uh, three session uh, course with them. Nice. So that well, was Deb, fun. Deb says that your imagination blows her mind. So what kind of advice do you have for a new author? who is looking for ideas. And I mean, it seems like things come to you and you just, you just are a wealth of ideas and information, any advice or anything that you can provide to others? Yeah. Uh, read, read, not just children's books, read philosophy, read, read books that interest you at, on a deeper level, on a heart level. I, I get so many ideas uh, when I, just from I, I I forget the I was reading a philosophy book, uh, Eastern philosophy I don't remember, uh, and and what came out of it was uh, was my first the first attempt at a book which was the most beautiful snowflake, you know you you did you didn't show this one, I didn't show that one I forgot let me see if I can find it um, the most beautiful snowflake it, this comes from a philosophy 
book or, or a, a series of lectures uh, that that where the where the instructor or the teacher was talking about when you really get down to it, we're all one. We're all like one being. Uh, we're, we're we're like leaves on the same tree. Uh, mm -hmm. And and what I thought about was the most beautiful snowflake. Well, there was going to be a protagonist. Her name is Bella, and Bella thinks she's the most beautiful snowflake. And in the air, but you see that polar bear, that polar bear cloud, that polar bear cloud. Oh, wait a second. Uh, uh, what about all the others? Oh no, I'm the most beautiful snowflake in the air. Look at me. All right, but wait. What's going to happen next? Be careful. And I think she, it's up. Do you guys see it? Yeah. Yes, so, I see it, Tara. And and so, it, so the idea came from that a notion of we're. In essence, we're really all one. We're all on this planet Earth. We're we're all connected. We're all one, uh, and we're all meant to be here. And so, I chose to use the snowflake, who in the air is has her beautiful six pointed wings. But once she goes on the ground, she becomes part of a blanket of snow, and she doesn't know where she ends. And Sarah, another snowflake, begins, and this other snowflake here, and. And she, it comes, she comes to realize she, she's part of this big whole. So going back, where, that's where the idea came from. The, 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 this lecture or whatever it was, I can't recall, that in essence, we're all one. And which is a, which is a basic tenet of, of a lot of Eastern mm -hmm. philosophy. I love that. So, you know, read, read. And then when it touches your heart, uh, make a note in your phone or somewhere and write one, sometimes one line, sometimes one line will do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, here, here's one. Bert the Birch. Uh, this was, uh, I had, oh, this was a combination of things. I, I had just, I read a lot of poetry. I, I was reading Robert Frost Birches and around the same time, I was thinking about, uh, I was, it's another philosophy book about being willing to bend so you don't break. And I took those ideas, the idea of a birch and being willing to bend so you don't break. And I combined them into a story of this little scrawny birch tree on uh, Avenue H in Brooklyn, where I used to play. And um, it grew up out of a crack uh, under terrible conditions. And all the other trees, the elm, the, the sycamore, the, the oak, they were haughty and big, but they did not bend. And so when a hurricane came, they broke. And Bert the Birch bent, he bent and he bent. And that was the, the story is be willing to bend with the, the breeze, you know, don't, don't fight it. So uh, that's where that idea came from. Right? I mean, ideas are so in a new story. Um, they don't come out of thin air. I really think that... Um, mm -hmm. If I'm struck by a song or by uh, a, a story or a, a, a philosophical statement, um, I'm going to, you know, I very well might turn into a poem or, or, a, or, or a story. I mean, they just happen. Yeah, I like the idea of, of just exploring all kinds of different mediums and reading and and being open to allowing all of those things um, in various forms to influence your writing and yeah. ideas. That's yeah. great. You know, you said the key words, being open. Yeah. Um, I've always had a lot of confidence, but I mean, it, but that starts with being willing to be open mm -hmm. to your eyes and all your senses to, to ideas. And, um, and once you get something, just stay with it, go with your heart. Um, it's, you know, the worst that can happen is you don't sell too many books. But Well, um, you know what? I, that's the one thing I could definitely say about your stories is they're all heart-centered and they're profound to me, you Thank know? You. That, well, is, uh, that is really what, um, why I love your writing so much. Thank you. You, you, <laughs> you just reminded me of a, of a non-profound book. Uh, it's for older kids. It's for 10 to... 12 year old 13 it's called gross grammar and what i did was i i wrapped and syncopated lyrics of 
real grammar rules from when I was an English teacher, uh, uh, real rules of grammar that kids can use, but it's told in, with, with, uh, with rhyme and rap and it kind of uh, with some gross words like uh, fart or pee, you know, not too bad <laughs> or, or barf, but, um, but gross grammar. Um, and I, I think kids of, of a certain age who hate grammar, uh, 10 and to 13, might really like it. And I made it and I hired a rapper to, to do the lyrics. And he has he's great. He does all these different voices. Oh, and, that's uh, fun. I got to get that link so I can that post come it out. I don't have. Oh, I oh, have it's the not audio. Ready yet? I have okay. the audio, but I don't have the book. So I want to give the audio away for people who buy the book. But I haven't. I have to consult Tara on that. It hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been, terror it hasn't been terrorized. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's awesome. great. So Tara, did you want to share the, the snowflake cover? I just um, did. Didn't you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just didn't get your commentary on it. So I thought, oh you might yeah, let me, Oh let yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah. Hold on one sec. Let me share yeah. it. Here's before. <laughs> let me share. Hang on one sec. Deb says that's helpful. I need to stop saying I have no talent or imagination. That <laughs> is true because you the more you say things like that, the more you speak that into into um being so right. we need to be more open and realize that that things are going to come to you the more that you're open to it and the more that you believe in yourself so this cover the first cover was you know the artwork again just stunning but that title wasn't doing that title treatment was not doing this cover justice and i wanted to just kind of wrap that yeah um, that I'm title gonna, around I'll, I'll around the polar bear around the snowflake and and oh, because of that it just okay, pops fine. even more I can't talk. I'm, on the, I'm on the air <laughs> it pops even more and i just think that it gives it just such a modern fresh new just pop right. to it and it just completely changes the whole thing yeah i do love it so text choice font choice is so important in the layout it's um, so true. And the placement yeah. too, because Bob's original cover, it was just very small. It was right here in the center. It just wasn't fun for kids. And at the end of the day, you know, parents obviously have to be drawn to it. They're the, um, they're the ones who are going to be purchasing, but you want it to be fun for kids too. And I think that this, you know, again, you know, matches the style of the of the artwork, but also gives it a modern flair. Yeah. Well, I'd love to give you an opportunity, Tara, to share uh, if people want to get in touch with you and get some help with reimagining their covers. Um, do you want to share how best that they can reach you? Yeah, absolutely. You can just send me an email. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat. Uh, and you can just contact me anytime. Um, I'm happy to help you um, redesign your covers or, or design a cover from scratch. Uh, we can jump on a quick Zoom call. I can just get a sense of what you're looking for, what kind of feelings you want your cover to evoke, and, and then just get a little background. And then I just jump in and I do what I feel works. And then we have that as like a jumping off point and then we perfect from there. Yes. Awesome. So it's Tara at Cavosi, C-A-V-O-S-I-E dot com. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And just reach Bob, out anytime. Yeah. Bob, how about you? Do you want to talk a little bit about how people can find your um, your books and where where can they do you have a website that they could go to as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Please go to uh, MrZStoryTime.com and uh, you can actually download a free copy of uh, the audio of The Mayfly and the Methuselah Tree on the site. You'll learn a little bit more about me and uh, you'll see all 14 of my books. Uh, let's see. 
I, I was hoping I could go do a really brief demo on, on what I taught my sixth graders on how they could write their book. Would oh, I helpful? love that. We, we actually have 10 more minutes. I don't see any questions coming in from, from anyone. So yes, let's go ahead and do that. I would love that. Everyone, I'm actually going to say goodbye. I just have to, another call at yeah. um, nine o'clock. So it was amazing talking to you, Bob. So great seeing you, April. Thank Everyone you. in the group, take care. If All I right, can help anyone, care. please, please reach out. But have a great night. Thanks for joining Thank us, you. Tara. Bye. Good seeing you. Thanks for all the great covers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell I, us more about about the whole the writing that you are and how you were explaining that to the kids. I'm gonna get my whiteboard. Okay. Uh, hang on. <laughs> Just bam. And while we're waiting for Bob to get back, you can feel free to post questions, feel free, you know, always happy to have comments, but if you have any specific questions you wanna post, we are happy, we're here to also help you answer your questions about self-publishing, writing. Um, this is one of the benefits of being part of my YouTube channel or my Facebook community. Some people are watching live on my Learn to Self-Publish with April Cox Facebook group. Others are watching in uh, from Self-Publishing Made Simple on YouTube. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, then please do, you know, give this, this um, video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you're, uh, you're um, alerted when we go live. And also, the um, if you are looking for a self-publishing community, of a supportive community where you can ask questions and share things, um, it is a private Facebook group called Learn to Self-Publish with April Cox. And it is completely free to participate. And um, you are more than welcome to join that group. I'll put some links into the uh, below the video. Um, so I do invite you to be a part of that as well. All right. Whenever okay. you're ready, Bob. Oh, these markers are crappy. Mm. Oh, it's not, you don't use them for a while and they get dried out. Ah. All right. This is hard to see. It's Here's what I use. I tell the kids... Uh, the the four magic what are the four magic words every author has to use and children's book authors are no different they are somebody wanted but so if you at home go take a piece of paper and across the top write those four and then draw a line down like this Do that. Somebody wanted, but so. I'm going to try to get a better erase, a dry erase marker. This will be worth it. I can do this in seven minutes. We get a, we get a, a, a lesson on writing, which is really cool. I think that uh, Bob's ability to come up with all these awesome stories is um, just amazing. So it's kind of nice we get a little glimpse into how you do this work, this is, Bob. I want you to know this is, you don't have to, first of all, get rid of the idea that you're not creative. You Get rid of that idea. If, if, if sixth grade kids can write wonderful stories, you can too. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna give you an example. I finally found a marker that works. So I hope you have this down. Somebody wanted, but so. Sometimes there's another but so. I'm gonna do the typical. Uh, uh, I asked the kids, well, what story do you want to take apart? And I'll show you how it works. Every every story works with somebody wanted, but so. Well, 90% of stories. So. I say, 
what's your good story? And they tell me, how about Cinderella? So Cinderella, and then I'll say, well, what did she want? Oh, she wanted to go to the ball, go to the party, go to the party for the, that the prince was holding, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the key. There's a but, there's a conflict, there's an obstacle. What is it? She, the, uh, her stepmom says no. Stepmom, no, exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted but so. In every story, there's a protagonist, there's a, a goal, there's an obstacle, and then there's a resolution or, or half a resolution. Well, what happened? She became the, the, the fairy godmother, um, gave her uh, you know, all this magic. So magic happened, and she went to the ball as a beautiful and looked like a beautiful princess. But it's not over. What happened at 12 o'clock? She turned back to rags. Turned back to rags at midnight. So what happened? Well, live ever, ever. Talia. They all lived happily ever after when, when the prince found her size four glass slipper and put it right on there. Now, right. How about my story? Uh, think about uh, oh, the, the, the mayfly and the Methuselah tree. Somebody, uh, the, the, the tree wanted, what did he want? This is a little different to be left alone, right? Mm -hmm. But the mayfly flew into his life and showed him a new way. So the Methuselah tree uh, was transformed and saw life differently. So th that's the four steps, transformed. Now it's your turn. I mean, we I can do. There's so many. You, you take a movie or a, a novel. It's it's pretty much somebody wanted, but so, and mm -hmm. usually sometimes there's another but so. With you listening, watching us now, think about that when you sit down, write your list, and brainstorm half a dozen uh, a protagonist, uh, a goal, a obstacle an obstacle and a, a resolution mm -hmm. or a half resolution and then another obstacle and a real resolution. If you can break it down to those four to six steps, you'll have the, the bones of a, of a good story. I then, love that. Then you flesh it out. Well, we're almost done out on time. Yeah, yep. it's, five, it's a, a minute toward the, to the hour. So catch me on mrzstorytime.com. And uh, yes. write me a note. Uh, and yep. April, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for coming and sharing all of this knowledge and your beautiful stories with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.